Over 34 years ago, a movie that is very near dear to my heart was released in theaters and it has become since then a cult classic. Tons and tons of generations after generations have picked up on this movie. Parents showing their kids this, relatives, whatnot. And this movie has become more popular now more than ever. We're talking about Killer Clowns from Outer Space, and we have a very special guest with us, our good friend, John Masari. How are you doing today, John? I'm doing good. That that intro is a hard act to follow. Oh, man. I I, uh, I think I've just been doing this for so long that I just, it just it's just second to none to me now. And you got it. You're hitting the post, man. That's I'm, how they... That's how they call it business. You're just hitting the post. I've tried. Right. I've tried my hardest. So, I mean, 34. Can you believe it's been 34 years since this movie was released? It's, it's kind of hard to, to really believe that it's been 34 years because um, after the movie was released, there is this lull. Right. And for me, it lasted a long time. And I didn't realize there was such. Um, Okay, let's put everything into context. In 1988, it was released 34 years ago, mm -hmm. like this week. Right. Right. So 1988 and, and the year 2015 or 16, it was the 30th anniversary. Right. I got invited to Monster Palooza. I had not a clue what the heck was going on. <laughs> I got this frantic call from the Kyoto brothers. The Kyoto brothers are the filmmakers and creators. Yep. So their office called me and says, listen, there's the, the uh, 25th, excuse me, the 25th anniversary of Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Okay, I want to say it's 2012, 2013, 2013 at Monster Palooza. Right. And I go, I had, I go, what the hell's Monster Palooza? He says, <laughs> oh, you can bring things to sell. What, is it a, is it a, um, a garage sale? What do you mean? Like, like old clothes? I don't understand. No, no. <laughs> It's that we're celebrating the 25th. So it, immediately in my head, I'm thinking it's going to be at their studio in the parking lot. Right. Having a party. And maybe they're going to raise money for a charity or something like that. Right. No, she had, no, it's a convention. <laughs> oh, you mean like a sci-fi convention? No, a horror convention. Oh, okay. And who's going to be there? Everyone from the cast. And so I had, I said, okay, where is it? What time? I went there. Um, uh, Amy and I went there. And I'm going, I, I was flabbergasted because there's all these, we were at a table that had the cast, right? everyone, just about everyone that had anything to do with the movie. And uh, they were selling stuff. They were, pay, people were paying them money for their autograph. And I'm going, I don't understand all this. <laughs> I just, I go, what has happened to all this? So I was sitting right next to the absolutely delightful uh, Suzanne Snyder. Right. And she goes, so I understand you did the music score. And I said, oh, yes, I did. I did. So do you do go to conventions a lot? I go, um, I go to like, um, you know, music conventions where they're selling equipment, but I've never been to anything like this. Right. So what have you been doing? I go, well, I've been doing commercials for a long time. I, a bunch of times I did for a good like six or seven years, did like high end national commercials with a really awesome music production company. And I did documentaries, television shows, a variety of movies. I had no idea this was going on. Oh, you, everyone loves this movie. Yeah. And I go, that's really good to know because I love the movie. <laughs> I was in love with it. I fell in love with the movie when I first saw the the uh, the um, the spaceship in the forest. Yes. That's oh, beautiful scene. Beginning. And I go, okay, I know where these guys are coming from. I love this movie now. Right. It's got a, it's got a sense of craziness, but it's a sense of magic and wonder and alluring mystery and all that stuff and i just i just fell in love with the movie and it was just so sad that it kind of like kind of missed the mark as far as uh finding an audience early on in its in its uh life right and it's the property has changed hands so many times and i'm so happy that i i think mgm has partnered with uh amazon on it now and so it maybe new pro possibilities are opening up and they were very kind, by the way. Now, now we come to the, today, right? Where I realize, you know, there is an audience or people that love this movie. They deserve something. Mm -hmm. So I've been, I've been doing things musically with the show. I got um, f about four or five years ago. I got the, um, I bought the rights to uh, perform the music score with an orchestra live to film. Right. So that was very well attended. Um, 
in, in downtown Hollywood, like the actual day that it was released, which is actually a week before the 27th. I think it was the the 19th. Right. Uh, is when it was was premiered in Los Angeles. Then it was released nationwide on the 27th. So um, that was a lot of fun. I've uh, I've been doing involved in a variety of projects musically, and one of the projects I'm doing is a an event um, for the fans called uh, the Killer Clowns from Outer Space Cosplay Dance Party. Yep, which is a combination of uh, uh, the music is like a uh, horror metal synth wave. And the show is kind of like a variety show where the audience is kind of involved. We're dancing. I have a variety of people helping me um, uh, up on stage, uh, dancers and performers, and interacting with the audience. Very important. Uh, we're going to have, you know, there's people that have tattoos, fans that have committed characters from the movie in ink. Yeah, they deserve a platform. So you come to my cosplay dance party, and if you want to show off your tattoo, you get a prize. There you it know? is, right there. Oh. So he, he... there's a bunch of people. The same thing with playing air drums, best costume. It's going to be a lot of fun. Oh man! So talk a little bit about that. I mean, obviously, with with this in relation to Killer Clowns from Outer Space, you you had this planned originally for New Year New Year's Eve, right? Yes. And um, killing it, I'll be always killing it. You're always killing it, man. You're the always killing it. <laughs> the Kron, the Omnicron, shut us down. Yes, C COVID <laughs> just bummer. just shut it down. It was it was supposed to be New Year's Eve, um, but uh, it's given you time to uh, kind of recuperate from all of that, and and now you, you we're we're finally having the event in June. Mm -hmm. um, June third and fourth. Yes, talk to us a little bit about uh, how this came together. And again, you you did mention it was you know something for the fans to to keep holding on to that you know that love for that film. Uh, talk to us about what how it came together and and what can we expect going into this event too. Well, after the one thousandth and one one thousand and first time, one thousand and one times <laughs> that fans asked me when is there going to be a sequel. I go, you know, I I don't know when there's a good sequel, but I can give you something. Would you yeah. like to hear some new music? How about we have an event where we all get together? I play some new music that's uh, actually it's music from the movie, but it's been expanded and recharacterized and a lot of fun. Yeah, I mean, you when you listen, you go, oh yeah, this is Killer Clowns, but it's like uh, been uh, you know it's John Masari in 2022 <laughs> as opposed to 1988. Especially you know with saying? all the technology we have today, right? Yeah. And so I called the Dickies, and uh, they're the band that played the theme song. And I said, "Guys, you want to play with me on this? You know, I need I need some guitar, I need bass, I need drums. Um, there's also uh, so that was uh, I, I got to give them credit, give, give them shout outs. Okay, there's Ben Sealing, lead guitar. Uh, there's uh, on bass. There's Ed Tatter. There's um, Adam Gomez on drums, and then my good friend uh, Jonathan Padilla." who's in the mountains, high up in the mountains. He's a metal guitar and bass player artist. He uh, lent tracks. And then a really good friend of mine, uh, Dan Serper, who uh, also played guitar. So we have right. live guitar. You got me on all the synths and me doing like sound design and editing. And so I, it's 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 a new experience. It's a new killer clown experience for people. 2.0 right there, man. You just, yes. I think you're just kind of secretly hyping us up because you maybe you you probably I think you do know some sequel plans and maybe you're just you're just you're keeping the hype going. Drinks cup, see? Neither confirm nor deny that comment right now. <laughs> well, I'll play this on another project. It's completely different project. This uh, just give you an insight kind of insight behind the scenes how the business works i was at a production company of guys i've worked with before and uh, on my phone i get this oh wow that's really cool i get a, a message from uh my agent who says um you, would uh, are you free to start this this that and the other thing it looks pretty interesting and mm -hmm. i said sure and it's the this that and the other thing that i'm working on just happens to be what the company I just came to visit because I was in the area, you know, Hey, Hey, what do I come by and say hi? Oh yeah. Yeah. Come on. We'll have uh, have coffee or something, or maybe we'll get a sandwich or something. So I go, so I'm sitting there with my phone. I'm looking at my phone and I'm going, one of the guys come out. I go, are you guys working on this particular project? And they go like this. 
it's, you know, it's like the emo, you know, the emoji with just, yeah, no, they just, they were no just in complete shock eyes. right then and there. You just literally froze. Yeah. Come on. I, I'm going to be working on it. I'm starting the, on the 28th. Man. Oh, oh, let me, let me find out if I can talk <laughs> about it. <laughs> so that's the way things are because yeah. it. Like, you, you don't want to ruin the surprise. Exactly. If there's exactly. something cool going on, you don't want to ruin the surprise. Exactly. The point is, I just wish I knew something. I know, I know, I know, okay. fans. And I wish I had something to share with you. One of the one of those fans when we first met was me asking about a sequel plan. But right. hey, man, I, I'm just glad that I get to just hang out with you and learn more about the, the making of this film as far as music hey. goes. Man. And I gotta say, I really it's a lot of fun to see you at the conventions doing your thing. Oh, thank you uh, so much with the, with the various cosplay uh, 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 performers, and that's what's really great to me the 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 horror community. And the cosplay community, they're such sweet people. I guess oh, because, beautiful, yeah. I guess because in it, it's it gives them an opportunity to be something of a extrovert. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. They get to they get to literally be someone else for kind of a day, but you know, mm -hmm. get a lot of a uh, cool exposure. And a lot of these people who do these, I mean, I've seen some sick killer clowns. Oh uh, yeah, very cosplays. Elaborate. You know, they they go full on like this. Looks like something that was used in the film. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Very elaborate. Um, 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 a lot of time that some people spend getting ready for it. And uh, I always, the first thing I always do is is when I see the new fans that approach me, uh, you know, especially in cosplay, just admire the all the work and effort. Uh, and thought that went into their costumes and getting right. ready because I figured they had to get ready they had to wake up in the morning get all that stuff together and get in the car and put it on at the right time I mean they can't obviously can't drive around like that and wait in line for crying out loud yeah, yeah. no I, I you know what and, and this is going to be something I need to tell you personally because you uh you don't realize it but because of you so many doors for me have opened in the, in the future, you know, and, and, and things I've gotten to do and stuff. So I really owe you a lot for, for taking a chance on us for, for doing that podcast. And it was, the, you were the nicest guy when we first approached you about doing a, a show, you were like, come over, we'll, we'll do a show in person. And so this was pre COVID by the way, for anyone wondering, mm -hmm. this was 2019. There was and, a time where people did, would, were able to go outside and talk to each other. Yeah. We were all normal. And then, and then, then, then COVID happened, but it, 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 I owe you a lot, man. Cause you really, you really did a, you really helped me big time coming up and and, and I, I will never forget that i think that's why i'm always so happy when i go to conventions and stuff i'll be like me and my buddy scott will be like oh we got to go see john dude john's here we got to go say hi we got to go make sure that that we say hi to him because you know he's always cool with us i mean it goes as far as you and i have 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 built such a good friendship uh last december i i brought you tamales i was gonna say see you, you just wrecked my punchline i was gonna say you know, this all sounds very well and good, Anthony, but you know it came at a cost. <laughs> Guaranteed Christmas tamales. Tamale, hey. Fresh yeah. made from your aunt or your for my that was those ones that you had were from my aunt and uh oh. it's 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 something that we've been doing in the family for, for many generations and what's your aunt's name? Uh her name is Marianne. Tell Marianne they were like from heaven. They're they, delicious. No one really understands. It's like when you go to the store or even some restaurants and you get tamales, there's something about when they're made by a loved one mm -hmm. and, you know, they've taken the care for every step and everything's just done just so. It's like, it's hard for me. There's very few Italian restaurants I can eat at. Right. Because I know how things should be made. I mean, from the boiling of the water, mm -hmm. you know, there's a process, you know, yeah. to like what pasta you pick out what brand you use, you know, mm -hmm. where it came from and all that stuff. But yeah, your uh, aunt's uh, tamales were just, oh, heaven. I, I, I think, and this goes for, for a lot of people and families, but I think that it, you make them the way you want them to taste and, and you want right. them to taste really good. You want yeah. them to taste, especially with tamales, you want, one thing about tamales is you want moist tamales the most. Yes. Because that is what, honestly gives it the flavor right there with the meat and everything and then my family does and i'm pretty sure a lot of uh mexican families do this as well or we may be the only ones that do it i don't know we throw a little olive in there for that extra flavor oh yeah love that the love olive is, that. is is that's what that's what seals the deal right there 
and it's just the right proportion of everything it's just layered perfect i mean yeah i remember when i looked at i i told him oh, look at this this is like perfectly structured I, mean, it was, I almost don't want to eat it it looks so good i actually ended up giving him the bag to take home that weekend i'm like here i, know, I was sharing it with everyone <laughs> i was like here make some uh make some eggs with this i guarantee you it'll go no, good you were you were sitting there protecting oh, these are john's tamales i go no no everyone could have some. no they're john's john asked me in 2019 <laughs> I'm just fulfilling the promise years later. Well, that's great, man. Oh, no. Well, we got to do one of these things in person. Maybe, you know, maybe when Halloween Horror Nights uh, comes back on, we'll we'll go, we'll hang out at at, uh, Universal Studios. Yes, 100%. Just a hang. We'll we'll take you through the mazes, Nights of Horror Style, see how... uh, how you week we can enjoy them. I don't think I can take... I I may have to get a doctor's note. (laughs) they're gonna sign the permission slip and everything right 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 oh man but back to i mean this i mean 34 years man and and you know we talked about you know generations upon generations Mm -hmm. discovering this film i mean we you and i we see five-year-olds that will dress up little kids yeah love this film right right. and they come up to you and and they just they're just happy to meet you and and happy to to meet someone from the you know there's just generations upon generations that just love this film there's a whole community of kids there's um there's scary creepy max who and 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 there's a twitch the horror kid there is um uh that creepy cool kid yes there's uh creepy jayla yeah they all know they they know they know more about uh horror movies than i do they probably know more horror movies than i do yeah, I, I I learn a lot from them. They just yeah. know all the little tiniest details and all that sort of stuff. And and you know, you're right. I'm I'm getting people that are gr- grandparents that like they saw the movie, maybe at a drive-in or something like right. that. Right. It's like they said, well, you know, this is the horror movie I could show the kids. We put pop the kids and the grandkids. Yeah. Put popcorn on, and uh, uh, and everyone has a good time. You know, hundred percent kind of movie that's like it's a manage imaginative and good intentioned yeah i think it was uh there was one night i was spending the night at my mom's house and i you know i I sleep i usually sleep on her couch in the front room so she has the nice big tv Mm -hmm. and uh i'm I'm sitting there uh, i'm I'm flipping the channels on on the premium you know you got hbo and on hbo they were playing killer clowns from outer space and right when i turned it on it was the mgm logo i'm like oh it just started okay i gotta sit here and watch it right Right. And then, you know, you go into the Dickie score, you go to the Dickie song and then the, the movie starts. But I, I don't know, man. I think I think you you could cast this differently and it would just wouldn't be the same. Mm-hmm. You know, you could get someone else to do the music and it wouldn't be the same. Like there, everything in this movie is perfect the way it is. Like right. you can't change a thing. Like there was a story I heard and this is where you come in because I'm, I'm curious to see how you did it. When John Williams usually scores films, he says he's watching it for the first time just like us. Was that how you felt when you were scoring this film? You were watching it for the first time, and you're like, oh, this is okay, and, and ideas started yeah. coming to your head and, and, and everything. How did, how did that go for you? How did that process go for you? Well, the only music that was put in the movie was the Dickies song, which was right. really cool. I said, oh, this is a, this is a really cool song. Yeah, you no, know, it like it kind of nailed the the groove of the movie. You, it kind of sets the tone. Mm-hmm. And then after that, there was no music whatsoever. And it was actually kind of it's actually kind of really creepy right. without any music on it. You know, so I had to like think how am I gonna how am I gonna you know be creepy but yet imaginative and fun. And like I said, I love the uh, the the tent the myster- the tent nestled in the forest yes. where it's kind of alluring and mysterious and in in some ways very beautiful. So I wanted to keep that uh, aspect to it. But basically, th- that was it. You know, I, I didn't get my I got I just got the core spirit of the movie and the Kyoto Brothers. You got to I got to give a shout out to the Kyoto Brothers because this movie came from their imagination. Mm-hmm came completely out of nothing let's let's make a you know they have such uh, an affection for the classic horror movies you know there's uh, i know right off the bat there's this king kong and oh, yeah. uh, the, the seventh voyage is sid and bad of course those movies that have a great amount of practical effects in them with uh you know uh, <clears throat> uh where, where they they're able to put like a 
piece of glass in front of the camera and then there's an artist that will paint an entirely different world. So you have a little bit of a grass field here, but in the background, there'd be this awesome uh, uh, landscape. Right. You know? So they had that working for them because that's what they, they grew up appreciating and that's what they studied all their whole life to do. So uh, a, a big part of this movie's success is it came out of the creative minds of three brothers that had a really love for the genre and the fantastic yeah. and, the, and the bizarre and the imaginative. Yeah. And it's, it's like the movie they would see if they were nine years old. Right. You know, and that's what they made. They made their movie for their younger self. They yeah. Were able to do it and have fun doing it. If you see the behind the scenes, you could you could just tell they're having a lot of fun. A hundred percent. I mean, you looked at them. If you saw them at Creepy Con, I mean, mm-hmm. you could t- there, there's there's a ton yeah. of people wanted to go see them, and then they were making their way. You know, everyone was going down the line of of all of you guys. You know what I mean? Like everyone was, you know, and. What I found the greatest though is you had the biggest killer clowns banner out of everyone, and I was like, "That is that is gangster." You got to respect that right there, man. Yeah. Well, you know that artwork was done by um, uh, the Kyoto Brothers themselves, right? And it's such a beautiful thing. It's it's the it's the um, it's the artwork that's on my uh, reimagined soundtrack album, right? So it's got a, a globe, Earth, and it has the three main characters yes. right three main clown clowns shorty i think rudy and i think um either uh, uh i think it's jumbo right it's the other one it's not um it's not uh clownzilla because clownzilla would just eat the other two <laughs> you know so uh i figured i go that's such a gorgeous piece i i just made it into a like a seven foot by seven foot banner yeah that, like just fills up the screen and it People just love taking pictures in front of it. Some people didn't even hadn't had not seen the movie yet. Mm-hmm. Just, I got to take a picture of that and send it to my friend who is a fan. Right, they're going to be so jealous that uh, I was here and they weren't. You know, I love seeing that banner, dude. It's it's yeah. every time I go, we go somewhere where you're there, it's yeah. there, and I just love it's it's a beautiful banner. And you did they did a really good job on the art, and you did a good yeah. job putting it onto that banner. I mean, it looks perfect. It, it really. It really is an eye catcher. Like you can't not walk past it and not notice it. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. It's a lot of fun. It's a it's a beautiful piece. Yeah. No. I I uh, I for one, um, I've said many times that this is this is easily one of my favorite horror movies of all time. Um, I think mainly because as just as a kid, you know, just watching it and just realizing like not all horror movies are scary. Some of them are actually fun too. And this one was the one that was that perfect blend of horror meets fun. I mean, the, yeah, the, it's a scary concept to think right. aliens disguised as clowns mm-hmm. came down and they're killing people for their own hunger. But at mm-hmm. the same time, you look at the, what they're doing throughout this film and discovering Earth for the first time and just being on Earth for the first time and everything that Earth has to offer. And they're just kind of like, we don't know what any of this is, so we're going to test it out, but we're going to go on a killing spree at the same time. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. I love that concept. You just, you just know they're always up to no good. Yeah, <laughs> and and so you know, let's fan theorize for a second because we, you and I, have obviously we don't know what's going on with a potential sequel. Hopefully, but if you saw a sequel today, mm-hmm. how how do you think it would go? Do you think it would take inspiration off what you're seeing a lot of revivals of of uh, horror? Um, classics come back today like you think they would do a, a something for the next generation of, of killer clowns fans like maybe instead of of mike and 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 them it would be their kids you know what i mean right. you think we'd get like a new generation of, of 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 a killer clowns kind of thing if they were to ever do a sequel well i wish i had an answer for you i think the success of a sequel mm-hmm. will 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 definitely rely on the imagination of the Kyoto brothers because right. that's where it started from yeah. no one told the Kyoto brothers basically the film company that produced the first movie said uh you guys did special effects for uh, tim burton and you've done all kinds of really awesome things can you give us a movie and they said yeah here it is killer clowns from outer space and they go oh wow okay and they did that movie yeah so i think you would have to say they, they still are very imaginative individuals they're still very creative artists and i'm sure they can take it to the next level in other words they don't need to say you know what i think it's time for someone else to do it we're kind of burned out they're not burned out at all oh they're still going 
Yeah, the same thing. I'm not burned out on mine, and I, I always take a new a new approach to to uh, my work as it is. I don't like 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 I had done. Well, I've done several things over the past few years. Each time, I didn't use the same template, so to speak. Right. You know what I mean? I, I just don't, it doesn't, after it get, can get really boring. Mm -hmm. You know, there's some people that, you know, I can't, I can't write a music score unless I have a full orchestra. I go, well, you know, sometimes I want something, uh, a very odd collection of instruments. Right. You know, you know uh, do I like full orchestra? Oh, well, of course, but do what I like. But for this, I think we need an odd collection of instruments. I have an origin story that I'm not going to tell you now. But I have an, uh, I'm going to be part of a, a really cool music performance and panel discussion at Midsummer Scream. In, I will be there. Korea. Yeah, I cannot wait to to see that panel. I, I saw you were, and that was another thing I wanted to bring. Right. I saw you were part of that panel, and I'm I'm very yeah. happy for you. I, I can't believe you're going to be up there with you and amongst many others who who've brought the world of horror to life with their music. Yeah. It's oh, be there's gonna, everyone's going to be there. The guy who did uh, Halloween, um, Alan Hallworth. Right. Uh, there's going to be uh, Christopher Young, who I went to school with. He did um, Hellraiser. Yeah. Uh, Richard Band is going to be there. Uh, uh, Henry Manfredini. Yeah. I mean, it's the, uh, oh, and uh, Holly Amber Church. She's new on the scene, but she's doing awesome work. Yeah. So it's going to be like the OGs of, of uh film horror it's like you got you got the uh you know the the older generation and you got the next generation coming in right. too so it's it's right. a good blend of two that way you you got you get to see how it was like back then and how it is today you know so it's a good blend right that's gonna be a lot of fun because we all get like 10 minutes awesome and uh, i'm gonna do my origin story which what which of the killer clowns march oh okay i have, I have some audio visual stuff to, i'm excited uh, we will be there at that panel. We will be filming the panel for the world to see after the convention. And I can get you, I can get you whitelisted with for the for at least my part. Oh, nice. I can get you whitelisted so that whatever music's played, it won't get you won't get flagged. Oh, for sure. Appreciate that yeah. so much. Oh man. But I, I'm excited. I mean, that's cool. I mean, the way I always now like thinking about it today, you know, 34 years later and all that. Um, the way I, you know, I'm looking at horror today and you got some examples like Halloween and, you know, it, the clown, you know, when, it, when they redid that again and they, they really obviously want to keep these properties alive for future generations to come. You look at a movie like the newest uh, Halloween and when it came out in 2018, um, it, it went from straight the first movie all the way to this movie. Mm -hmm. um, something like that, I think would be really cool to see for killer clowns to see it for a new generation. Maybe, like I said, they they probably have kids now and mm -hmm. their kids are now going to have to experience this, but we're not losing the main characters still. They're just going to be right. guiding them and, and teaching them as to what happened years ago to now how to fight it today. Cause you know, there's so much stuff that they're that's in this world today that they didn't have in their arsenal. Now, what if like Mike and, and all of them became like Lori Strode, crazy mm -hmm. where they they went to seclude themselves into a cabin they were loading up with weapons and stuff getting ready for the next one you know what i mean like I like in tremors where where you have um there was there was one that one character that always had the survivalist character in tremors right he was in all the movies yeah that, that sort of thing uh um, yeah yeah, yeah. There's all there's all kinds of possibilities oh, i mean man. or the I, story of the clowns themselves you know yeah i mean i i have um, you know I'm not supposed to say any of my what my uh, little fantasy origin stories are of clowns, like what planet they come from and all that sort. I'm not supposed to. Say, I've been told not to talk about it. <laughs> but, uh, in my in in my junior high school kid brain, I'm thinking about oh, they come from this such such a planet. Yeah. There, and the reason why they have this kind of technology is because of that. I mean, you can go on forever. Oh yeah. You, you, someone can make a career out of uh, uh, being on a team, a committee that's, that's, that's building the story of that. Yeah. But as far as new horror, would you, uh, let me ask you a question. This is maybe this is getting off topic. Would you consider um, uh, like squid games? Oh, hundred percent. Cause that was now horror is an interesting I love genre. That. I yeah. love that series. And I love that score. When I heard that score, I go, thank God. So now was that, fun. that was a, they made that. That was a Korea Korean show, right? Oh yeah, it was, it was right. Yeah, and there are people that say you have to watch 
the Korean version that has the proper uh, English translation subtitles, because there's a lot of little cultural things that completely go over people's heads. Right. You know, uh, like there's certain people that will, uh, certain people will talk about certain foods. Well, those, that's very expensive cuisine for some people mm -hmm. and the other people just don't know it. Then, then there's a certain um, accent that people speak with. They can tell those people that escaped from North Korea. Right. So all these um, uh, class and sect uh, societal um, uh, dynamics going on. Right. And um, I, you know, so I read up on that a little bit and, and my daughters are very much into um, Asian culture. They both speak um, Mandarin. Oh, nice. They were pointing things out. To, they were pointing me into the direction. We should watch it again. Uh, <laughs> this perspective and i go oh well that makes a world of difference oh know? It, it you know when you when you look at the the world of horror and you know there's so many sub to the to the to the overall genre that it, it's just like you don't you could categorize you could do something that doesn't look like horror but then when you finally watch the film you're like oh i can see why this is a horror film like there's right. so many subcategories of horror that mm -hmm. it, you know it's just you don't even know there's so much to, to so much out there to look at and you're just kind of like I, I am so confused and lost, but I'm I'm enjoying the film. So they they did something right, you know. Oh yes, yes. I like Jordan Peele's movies. Oh, like, they're fantastic. They're so brilliant. They're just yeah. like it's like mastermind next level. Yeah. You know, story concept, directing, cinematography, music um, by I think uh, George Abel, uh, George Abel's yes, mm -hmm. who's actually a classical composer. Right. Who, would do you know string concertos and, and now did he do the score for us i believe so i believe that's the go-to he's the one that works with um jordan, jordan. Hill. yeah because yeah. he 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 transformed well, well, like hitchcock had um hitchcock had bernard herman yes jordan Hill has uh, abel's yeah, yeah and usually anything george lucas or spielberg does it's john williams you know yeah. and um but yeah, what he did with us, especially with "I Got Five on it," to turn mm -hmm. a infamous rap song into something that became really creepy, yeah, is just phenomenal. Like Jordan, I know Jordan Peele probably has this vision of like what if we can make this a horror song instead of what it's actually talking about, then it, it's it, you know, and he does that perfectly. Like in every one of his films, he always has that one song that is loved by millions. And then he puts a twist on it and yeah. it fits the film perfectly. So no, Jordan pills, his film and, and his team, they do an amazing job out there, you know, and, and I, I'm, I'm looking forward to his next film. Nope. It should be amazing. It's looking like aliens. So no, Nope. Hasn't been released yet. No, I think it's coming out. June or July this summer. Really? Yeah. Okay. So it's they're not going to save it for the Halloween season. No, he's gonna he's gonna put it out. Uh, he's gonna just put it out this summer. He wants to make it a summer blockbuster, and and it's looking like I said, it looked like there's gonna be aliens involved. So I'm I'm excited to see what he does with aliens. And next year it's gonna be a maze. Maybe, uh, I'm hearing, yeah, may it could be <laughs> possible, yeah. You know, we had us. I wouldn't I wouldn't put it past them. I, yeah. I if it's if it's got a lot of horror elements to make into a maze, I'm I'm all for it. And now I'm just curious. After all this time, there's a um, another Stranger Things series. Uh, uh, yes, so. coming out this week, actually. Yeah, and uh, it's it's looking like uh, it's going to be the season four. They're they're marking it as the end of the beginning because they the the um oh, I forget what their names are the the brothers that are behind the Duffer brothers. Mm -hmm. They always plan this show to be five seasons long. Mm -hmm. Um, so this first half of the season is going to be released, uh, May, I think 27th and the later half will be J June or July. But however, those last three episodes or two episodes that they're going to release, they're going to be like movies, like long, like wow. the, the episode eight is going to be like an hour and a half. And like the last episode is right. going to be like two, almost two and a half hours long. It's, and it's amazing because they're kind of keeping up with the cast growing up. Yeah. So they, they keep so up with that story. They're going to be in the nineties, right? Yeah, yeah, probably in the late eighties, nineties, almost now, because these cat, they, they're they're. Uh, when officially did the story start? Because I, I, I I'm 19... my, my myself and my wife and other friends were watching, and they go, "Oh wait a minute, okay, that's that kind of tape machine, that cassette player, kind of puts it around 83. I you think know? I think the initial series started eighty three, eighty two. Okay. 
Yeah. Um, and then season two was about 83, 84. And I know that season three was all 84. Mm. 80, 84, 85, I think. So, okay. yeah, it's, it's, I, I, you know, what's funny is, you know, you bring up, you know, stuff like that in, in these shows. My dad, who's, you know, he's, he's in his 50s now, and he, we, we watch it together, and he will, if there's a toy or something on there, he's like, man, I remember having that growing up, you know? Let's place it. That's yeah. great. That's awesome. That's he loves awesome. it because he, you know, he grew up with all the stuff they use in this show. You know, it's like he yeah. had a lot of this stuff growing up. So it's just, it's, it's honestly just a nostalgia thing for him. He's like, man, I remember those, those things were awesome back in the day. So it, it's cool to see kind of, uh, this is a show for multiple generations to watch for, for newer generations to learn more about the eighties and for the, uh, for the older generations to reminisce on, on the good times they had in the eighties. You know what I mean? And there's that middle ground for both of them to kind of enjoy it together. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I love that so much, and, and it's one of the best. So I'm excited to see it this week. I mean, there's a lot of stuff coming out this week, man. We even have the Obi-Wan TV show coming out this this week on Disney+. Plus. That's incredible. I'm excited, yeah. but... That's, yeah. that's, that's going to be interesting. I've seen, I've seen so many trailers. I'm thinking to myself, I'm going to wait for all the all the episodes to go. To release. And then I can watch them when I want. And still I like, always say that, and then I'm just like, I can't wait. I got to see what's happening. But see, I, I don't, I don't want to say, oh, I have to be in front of the TV at a certain time. I, I can't afford that kind of time. Yeah, no, but I'm the I'll, same way. So I'll wait. You know, people are telling me, oh, you got to see this series. I got to see that series. And very few series that I I, I do that for. Yeah. You know, I, I'll, I'll sit in front of Squid Games was one of them. Right. Oh, There's yeah. just some series that just hook you in, you know? Yeah. And Yeah. Well, I happen to think that the Korean filmmakers now are um, what the Italian and French filmmakers were in the 50s and 60s. With the spaghetti westerns and stuff, huh? Yeah. So so the, the, the uh, Korean filmmakers, they have a certain style that's very captivating. Right. You know? Uh, I mean, did and- you watch Parasite? Yes, of course. The Parasite was phenomenal. I love that story. You don't know it's like when is this a family movie? Oh, well, I was, you know, I and yeah. I'm reading yeah. along the entire film. You know, yeah. I'm reading everything they say, but I feel like even if you didn't read it and understand, you would still understand what was going on because oh, yeah. it, it just it was, everything dynamic. was right there. Yeah, a lot of dynamics. In yeah, lo- incredible dynamics. I mean, yeah. there's so much going on. I mean, I imagine if I read the script, I would be. Oh, I can't wait to see this. Yeah, you're like you're just. You, I, it's one of those things where you receive the script and you just can't put it down because you're just mm-hmm. you're just reading it and then you're like, man, I can't wait to see what this looks like and on you film. Can tell f- from watching the movie that the script was well structured. Oh yeah, that's 100%. my opinion. Who knows? Yeah, what it is. I mean, there's movies that we've all loved that are classics. For instance, Star Wars, when they was first director's cut was put together, it wasn't really making sense, mm-hmm. and uh, this the 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 story goes, and I, I've never heard, I, I don't know, I don't think I've ever heard Steven Spielberg talk about it, but uh, George Lucas bought all of his pals in, Brian De Palma, uh, Scorsese, um, and um, Steven Spielberg had him watch the movie, and they made a lot of suggestions, and basically his, uh, George Lucas's wife, who was the editor, put the story together. You know, there's yeah. a film there, but you have to take out all the things that distract people. Yeah. And, um, I think that's, uh, you know, I, I think that's what makes a movie successful is to keep the audience engaged on the storyline so they they don't get lost. Well, I heard that too, and and I heard that um, Brian De Palma was the one that suggested George Lucas add the opening crawl so he, they get an idea of how they're what they're going into as far as and they story goes. It. They yeah, kept it really short. Yeah. That was that was cool to hear those stories, man. To see them grow up in USC and to kind of hear those stories, like it just mm-hmm. makes you think. Like, imagine if you were in the early stages of them designing Star Wars. You know, all these there films. Was, and there was so much doubt; they had no idea how it was going to go. Oh, and yeah. there's some of the greatest they had, they had, filmmakers of all time. No idea everyone was going to fall in love with it. They yeah, absolutely. Did. It's like I had no idea. Well, I was in love with my little movie, right? You know, Killer Clowns from Outer Space. I was Beautiful in love movie. With it. And then it was very, very frustrating that now I say, oh, you know, oh, uh, this guy did the music for Killer Clowns from Outer Space. And he go, wow, can I can I say hi? Or, you know, back then it was like when I would say, oh, yeah, I did Killer Clowns from Outer Space. It was like. Cringe, you know, yeah. like, isn't that like a dumb movie? I go, well, it's dumb in a creative way, you know, uh, I 
It's fun in a creative way. I, I will f- I defend that movie to the day I die. Yeah. So, so it just took a, a long time. And, you know, we're all still here, man. We're all still, the Kyoto Brothers are still, they work every day on a variety of media projects. Uh, you know, we're all creating things. We're all doing, I, I mean, I've got a, a bunch of interesting stuff. There's one thing I could talk about. It's not big, but it, but it was a commercial I did for a, an amusement park in Japan called oh, nice. Small Worlds, where everything's miniaturized. They That's hilarious. So, I, so it's safe to say that it's not a theme park for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you might break something. I might break something. I might hit my head on various things. You know me. I'm well, six foot six. You don't six. walk through it. You, there's like displays. That, that, that I think it's like in giant warehouses that people go to. But it's like, I think it's the concept of origami. Not origami. Well, maybe origami and bonsai. Okay miniaturize the plant trees you know it looks like a right. growth tree but it's like tiny right and so i did a commercial for that that was a lot of fun that's awesome yeah. and uh but it's funny a 60 second commercial we worked on it for two months is that funny <laughs> sometimes a lot of things like that takes a while because they need to, they want to perfect it the way they want oh, to yeah, vision yeah, it yeah. And, yeah. It. And, and then of course they hired a perfectionist <laughs> I can't yeah. leave well enough alone. You know what I mean? You so, asked me, I think you asked me at one point, she's, do you ever do tweaks on stuff? I go, I'm always doing tweaks on stuff. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. I think that's, I think that's what thrives on wanting to make us perfect though, as, as people, because we, we, we see the final product of something and we go, that's yeah, good, but I think it can use something else. Like uh, yeah, yeah. something they're missing. Like uh, right. I, I do or that to myself. Something that has to come out. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, oh, that thing that I loved over it's onto the left side of the the stereo field it's actually kind of get in the way i but if i take it out it's going to open it up and it's going to like really sing you yeah. know there's that too there's additive and subtractive right you know? i mean if you, you make a stew that has too many ingredients it, it kind of gets lost it does the you flavors know? are everywhere you're just like what, what are yeah we yeah doing? if you have like some defined flavors it's like listening to some like great metal song that has there's a guitar bass drums and a singer mm-hmm. and it's like they all have their space you know you stick your headphones on they all they're all in their own lane yeah and you just enjoy the song 100 percent. instead of being bombarded with a bunch of i don't know what i just listened to i gotta listen to five times although that has its own appeal as well something yep. that's complex with lots of layers um but anyways, we can talk about that forever. <laughs> so you're going to come to my thing on uh, June honey, Yep, 4th? we got we got our tickets. We're going that Saturday. Uh, we're going straight from Monster Palooza all the way. Lots of friends with you, right? Yeah, of course, man. We got it. We got it's a whole. We got a. It's not a big venue, but it right. would be fun if people were pouring out into the street. That oh yeah. Be- I think a lot of people are, are going to show up to this thing because it is Killer Clowns related and because you're doing music and it's it's mm-hmm. something brand new. Like you said, it's always trying to, to keep people entertained and not bore them. You know, you want to keep evolving and stuff. And, and you've done that many times. You've proven that many times with, with the music as far as from when we first got it on film to, you know, doing the, of course, movie and film concert. You got to tweak it even more and, and try new things with it, which sounded amazing with that. And then now we're getting this, uh, a whole a whole brand new experience with, with the music of the film. And, and this music itself, it has become iconic uh, along with the film. A lot of people love the march a lot of people just love the 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 fun aspect music of of the of the film and that's i think that's another thing that makes this film so iconic is the music itself so when people tell you when people tell you that how do you how does that make you feel oh well i don't want to give away my origin story but <laughs> i actually wrote the killer clown march when i was around 16 going on 17 right and when i played it to my band I'm, big, I'm not going to go through the whole deal. Right. But play through my band. They thought, oh, man, that sounds like jazz. <laughs> it sounds too jazzy. We're not going to play that. And um, and there's another piece I wrote that's part of the that uh, part of the Killer Clowns thing that I never used that they really thought sounded like jazz that just recently I had played with a metal band and I go that is what it sounds like yeah after all these years so it's like basically it's a lesson in in persistence yeah Yeah. so yeah because i i hear fans all the time man they're coming up to you and they're saying they love the music i've sat next to you at at conventions uh you know vending for our good friend tricks um 
and and just to hear the fans overpour it's like the first time I met you, I was like, I was exact same way. Like, and I still am to this day. Like, it's just something that of a movie that, uh, when I have children on my own, I'm going to be showing that for, for, that'd be like the first movie I, I probably ever show them. <laughs> well, speaking of which, my, my daughters who are now like, uh, 22 and 19. Right. They were 15 and 18 when they saw killer clowns for the first time okay and one time on sunday dinner they came over this dad we want to see killer clowns from outer space cue that thing up and i go after all these years ago, okay i never said you have to see this movie yeah they knew that i worked on this movie called killer clowns from outer space they would hear me mixing you know the very the, the new album and they came we did a recording session at uh, warner brothers studio with a pretty darn big orchestra studio orchestra that's cool and with just the best musicians in the world right. and they came to that but they never saw the movie oh ever. wow once right yeah so uh and uh so they got to i just you know i did some little things tinkering on the end and they enjoyed it i was amazed I was really thrilled they enjoyed it. I mean, it. what's not to enjoy with that film, though, too? I mean, you're, you know, it's it's such a fun film. I think there's so many iconic moments and, and lines set in that film. Mm -hmm. The music is is perfect with the film. Um, I gotta ask you, I gotta ask you a few questions though. Uh, do you have a favorite clown from the film? You like That's them like all? Asking, do you have a favorite daughter? That's true. That is true. It's like asking, yeah. No, yeah. yeah, they're all, they're all, it's all a family. I love them all. They're all, they'll have their, uh, you know, you could just tell there's a lot of work that was put in all the different characters. There's Shorty, which is actually in the script. It's called Tiny. Hmm. It, Tiny is that the actual name, but the, the fans have named like Rudy. I, I, you know, I don't know what Rudy was. I think Rudy was the tall skinny clown. Yes. There was, I think Jumbo had an official name. I have the script on PDF. I mean, I could look it up. Uh, <laughs> Clownzilla was always Clownzilla. Um, but um, but there's also, there's a bunch of, fans have given names to all the clowns. This one right behind me is always going to be named Spike. Spikey? Yeah, Spike. Spikey. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, you got that hair and it looks great and mm -hmm. it's beautiful. Yeah, I, I think, I, I'm the same way. I love them all, but there's, there's that little bit of love to Shorty, man. Shorty is just like the most adorable little thing you've ever seen. Right. And Shorty is uh, like, well, you can, as you can imagine, it's kind of a metaphor for people that have just had it being pushed around. Yeah. And okay. You put me in a corner. Not only that, you're totally dissing me. I'm not going to put up with it anymore. You, you know, so. the, the fun part about this film to me is every time I show someone who's never seen this film mm -hmm. and, uh, when your name pops up in the credits in the opening sequence, I'm like, I pause the film. Like that's one of my good friends <laughs> onward with the film. <laughs> I, I tell him like, so every music that you hear other than the Dickies, you know, song, every, all the music that you hear the score. I know the guy who did that <laughs> onward with the film. And people are always blown away by that. Like every time I, I'm like, yeah. yeah. And he likes my aunt's tamales. And, and he loves the, the family recipe tamales. So, you know, I think we're in the, in the clear with John. John's John's always been there for us, and we're always going to be there for him. And it's it's a, it's an ongoing friendship. We, we what, what are we going on now? We're going on like three four years now, aren't we? Easily, easily. Yeah, it's it's been. I, I mean, think, um, um, <clears throat> Halloween Horror Nights 2019. Yes, is when we first hooked up. Yeah, yeah we first started talking even after the the, the podcast we shot. Mm -hmm. Um, we, we started talking more in Halloween Horror Nights and then I know some, co some COVID time passed and then, uh, convention started and we, we, we met each other once again and it, it's like no time had passed. We were just catching up and reminiscing and it's, it's been an, it's been an amazing journey, my friend. And I'm, I'm excited for what's, what's to come for the future. So that being said, the future, what, yeah. what do we have in store, uh, either with, do you have anything planned as far as appearances go obviously you're doing we have uh, june 3rd and 4th we have your your killer clowns dance party happening with a whole new uh, third and fourth yeah. yeah and then there's uh july 31st i'm at uh, midsummer scream at the uh, long beach convention center that's a pretty big one yes that's like i've always North defined it as the comic con of horror yeah it's it's pretty big and we're having like i said we're having that big um um uh 
panel discussion. I'm also going to be there all weekend uh, meeting fans. And, um, you know, I, I, I'm, there's more goodies that are coming out. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll have some of those. Uh, and what we do is uh, when you come to my table, uh, a portion of the money goes to help a um, children's youth orchestra here in Glendale. Called so I thought, uh, you know, it's funny you brought that up because I I, uh, I have donated to that a few times. Yes, thank you. And, thank and, I, and I continue, I will continue to do it. Yes, Let me thank you very much. Unplug this console though, but uh, this is my Xbox. Oh, and wow. this is this was the sticker. That was for the charity, <laughs> and it sits beautifully on my Xbox. That looks perfect. And it's the only sticker that's going to be on this Xbox because this is one of my favorite films. And I it know that like this product, yeah, it looks like actual hardware product. I know, right? Movie. Can we get a? Can we get some exclusive limited edition? Maybe for the 35th anniversary? Can we get some Killer Clowns Matter Space Xboxes made? That would be cool. That'd be That'd dope. Be cool. And then we could do like a nice little auction. You know what I mean? Like yeah. let's let's get the cast to sign it. And we'll auction it off for charity. That'd be great. I think it'd be amazing. There are other things happening in other parts of the country that um, they have there has a date hasn't been set yet. Right. But there's going to be other places, and I'm doing uh, some collaborations with some other um, Instagram uh, influencers nice. that are in the horror um, uh, community, and uh, be really be thrilled to travel to Europe. Oh. Do some, do some I bet the fan base out there is pretty big because overseas the fan base for stuff like this is is really big. Well, I understand it's really big in <clears throat> Brazil, right? And it's really big in definitely the UK. Yeah, and I, I think sporadically around in, throughout Europe, but I'm sure I bet you know UK for people in Europe is hard to get to. So I would say even too. Uh, speaking of overseas, I think this movie would be really big in in Japan as well. Because they Japan loves they love sci fi they love monsters yeah. they love horror so I would say this movie is huge over there too. Oh yes, yes. There's there's been and I know that because I get statements. <laughs> there you go, there you go. So, thirty fifth anniversary is next year. Yes. Um, about ten year almost ten years ago. But more like five. Uh, I am lost with time with COVID. Ever since COVID, it's five, five, five years ago. Five years ago, you did the concert to uh, the concert film live Actually, concert. Sorry, four, four years ago. Four years ago in Hollywood. Thirty um, fifth. We're, We're working on it. Can I, we, I would like to do something nice and big for the thirty fifth. I got I got to go to this one this time. I'm not missing this one. I, I'm going to need some help to take it to a bigger level than I took it because right. a, a, a thousand seat venue. And um, I would like to get some a larger venue that maybe has some property around it to have something like a like, like you know a, a mini convention where the film is part of the the convention. So we'll we'll see. Yeah, I'm, talk, I'm talking to a number of um, organizers that organize big events. Yeah. Uh, it, it would be a lot of fun. I, I, yeah, I, I, I'm so sad that I got, I didn't get to see it last time, but I, I don't want to miss it the next time it comes around. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and definitely something that's been on my bucket list of things to see, especially just in general to see a concert and, and, and film production. Mm -hmm. I think that's such a, a genius concept for music lovers, for lovers mm -hmm. of the film and, and to see a lot of like, they just did uh last Halloween, I believe they did the, or last Christmas, they did nightmare before Christmas and Danny Elfman came oh, out. Oh, so that was a huge success. Yeah, that was, that was, I mean, stuff like that blows me away. Billie Eilish was there playing Sally. I mean, there were so many great uh, guest talents there that were all performing and, and bringing this movie to life. And obviously, Danny Alphen's known for, for, for the voicing uh, Jack Skellington and stuff. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, it's really cool to see um, things like this. I think it, it really immerses people more into the film. Right, right. It's, so it, it's just another experience that, that elevates the film that you're watching and i know that everyone everyone i got nothing but great feedback the only bad feedback i got was was from the sci-fi channel and i think that's because the deal fell through oh see and they're I, just they're just but, salty yeah yeah exactly but everyone else was you know uh everyone was there it was just wonderful oh i should also mention at my um June 3rd and 4th cosplay dance party we got Buster Balloon Ooh. Hadwell the guy the he's like a world renowned balloon folder he's going to just be there cre creating I, all sorts of things for everyone I feel like it's very appropriate because of this guy right here 
yes. when he made his dog. Yes, made dog. Right. Yes. Yeah. And, and you best knowing that I, I'm going to have to get me a dog made and yeah. walk it around or on a little a leash. Hat or he, I think he, he, he has, he can just whip up just about any character from the movie. That's it's awesome. Like, he loves making the, um, the popcorn candy guns. Oh, that's awesome. I am super excited. This is going to be a lot of fun. There's a lot of friends that are going to be there. I'm super excited to, to hang out with, and and you're being that you're going to be there debuting this new this new set of music, uh, reimagined music from the film. And I'm super excited to see what it sounds like, what what the vibes are like, and, and I'm I'm excited to see what people think about it because this is this is uh, something that was. You know, that we, we unfortunately had to cancel for New Year's Eve, which would have been awesome, but it's okay. Summer parties are just as fun as New Year's Eve parties, in my opinion. Right. So. Absolutely, absolutely. Man. And it's it's the first thing kicking off summer, the first weekend in June. Oh, yeah. Off summer. It's, it's a week right after the 34th anniversary, so it's yeah. perfect timing. Perfect timing. So if you guys... I believe tickets are still on sale, right? Yes, of course. Yeah. Okay, so we're not sold out yet, but let's let's get it sold out so we can we can have more of these in the future. But uh, tickets are on sale now. Um, you, I know you're on Instagram. You've been promoting it a lot too. Mm -hmm. um, so go ahead and you can follow John Masari on Instagram, um, and, and you'll see a lot more information about it uh, on top of the the little preview that we we gave you today. But 34 years, man. Oh. I that that is just that's just shocking. That's 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 older than me. <laughs> That'll be at. Um, <laughs> that's right. It is a little. <laughs> that is at uh, Zombie Joe's Underground Theater in yes. uh, North Hollywood, California. North Hollywood. Now, what better you place to have a party? Instagram, you'll 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 see a link to to Zombie Joe, and uh, it's it's easy enough. Right. It's also on Eventbrite. Um, there's also something called um, uh, th uh, that virtual event. Yeah. You know, it's it's kind of like a a different version of Eventbrite. So right, I, I'm excited, man. I, I and I can't wait. This is something I've actually been excited for since you told me about it at, at Halloween Depot. Mm -hmm. Um, and can we give a shout out to our friends over at Halloween Depot too? They Halloween are just Depot, fantastic Rob. people. Fantastic then, people. Uh, Frank and Sam's. Yeah. Spooksy Boo. All these event. amazing. Yeah, you know yeah. all these uh, the the beautifully nice people over at Midsummer Scream. That team. Mm -hmm. and that's another great team. I mean, just everyone who keeps that SoCal haunt vibe alive year round Absolutely. and, and that horror fill, uh, we, we thank and appreciate all of you. And, and thanks for giving the world more time so we can, we could see John Masari in person, man. That's been a lot of fun. So I, I bet you, you've been having a lot of fun since COVID too. Obviously it's been hard being locked up. Now you're getting to see the fans again. That must be a wonderful time too. hundred percent. So 34 years, John, uh, I can't thank you enough for, for coming up with an amazing score for this film and, and continuing to evolve it and, and, and give the fans what they want to, to hold them over for, for hopefully one day, another and sequel. I'll be seeing you in person. I may call you up on the stage. It, okay, there's one. Don't tempt me for a good time. One thing we've added, we've added a sing-along. Because I did a I did a little bit of a different version of the uh, of the uh, the Dickies are still performing it. Okay, I did a slightly different version of the Dickies song. So we're going to have a sing along. That's going to be the, I'm, the end of the uh, at the end of the Causeway party. I'm down. I can't wait. That's I mean if you know get a little mosh pick going have to see you next week. Next week, man, I'm ready for it. I'm you ready. To, and you don't have to bring tamales this time. Okay. Okay, <laughs> I, I, that sounds fair. Maybe I'll uh, I'll bring some goodies from Monster Palooza though. We'll see. You got it. That'll That's be gonna be a lot of fun. Okay, man. It's gonna be great. I can't wait. I know the fans are excited. We're all excited. Thank you so much for joining me. This was actually, believe it or not, John hit me up to do this, and I was a hundred percent with it to do a thirty fourth <laughs> anniversary um, podcast. And and I am glad we did it. We got to talk more and and to get some some info out there. So. I hope you guys are uh, celebrating the 34th anniversary as well. Go ahead and pop it on your uh, your TV tonight and, and go enjoy it with a nice big box of popcorn and some nice big soda um, and a nice big pizza. There you go. You can't go wrong with any of that. That's, that's, the, that's the movie night uh, food right there. But ladies and gentlemen, if you guys are fans of Killer Clowns of Outer Space, uh, leave it in the comments below. What is your favorite scenes from the movie? Some of your favorite songs from the movie as well from John score. Um, definitely leave them in the comments below. Give that video a like and hit that subscribe button with that bell notification. Be where every time we put up a new video, Killer Clowns from Outer Space, happy 34th birthday, and I will see you for 35 because I cannot wait.
We'll be uh, here. We will be here. So with all that being said, I'm your host, Anthony. That is my good friend, John Masari, composer of Killer Clowns from Outer Space. And we will see you guys next time. Come, Odie.